ACC. Third quarter in Champaign between the Buckeyes and Fighting Illini. And here comes Ohio State. Jeff Graham, the junior from Dayton, Ohio, on the punt return, shakes loose from some tackles. He'll scoot it 66 yards for the touchdown. And Ohio State's back into this game. They trail it by three, 17-14. Back to Keith Jackson. Yeah, that's that's that. that's our other game. That part of the country. On second down. Big old fullback pounding along, and Leroy at 225 pounds. Pounds pretty good when he gets inside behind those big uglies. Puts the ball just inside the 44. They're looking at third down and a long five. Miami in the third, leading Cincinnati 42 to nothing. Gino Toretto at halftime. Toretta at halftime. 13 out of 16 for 239 yards for Miami. As you know, Erickson is hurt. And Toretta throws the three touchdown. Here's the option with Marinovic diving and picking up a first down for Southern California. Chico Fraley brought him down. You know, it was interesting talking with Jim Lambright, the defensive coordinator for Washington. He said SC has run more options this year than they have the toss sweep, the old uh, student body right, student body left that you used to know uh, Southern Cal's offense for. And that's interesting because now you have a, a tall, gangly kid like Marinovich who is not an option quarterback, but Smith says it's so tough to defense that he wants to have it in his offense. He's throwing. Throws underneath. I don't know whether the ball slipped. He had his choice. He had Urban Short coming out of the backfield. He had Galbraith over to the left. But uh, he really didn't work out for either one of them. Marinovich will. Well, he, let's. This is what he told me when we were talking about the option, about whether whether or not I'd like to run it. This is what he said. Second man down. You know, it's a little scary sometimes coming down the line, optioning a guy, and knowing you're going to get hit when you're pitching it. But uh, it's fun. It's just uh, like really like playing basketball, coming down in the middle of the fast break, just pitching it to the open guy. So it's something I've done. So it's not that hard. It's pretty easy. Yeah, but to which Bob Grease has said, yeah, but the foul's a little harder. <laughs> this is Emmanuel down the middle and first down and goal to go at the Washington seven-yard line. Well, Marinovich in his own right was an outstanding high school basketball player also. So the option fits in well. This is just going to be an excellent throw right down the middle. Marinovich on target all day long, lofting it over the linebacker's head in between the safeties. It's a big time throw. And Aaron Emanuel getting a spot of playing time. Makes it first and goal, Southern Cal, Washington seven. And Emanuel stays in a tailback. That'll do it. There's Clifford. I mean, that Clifford has a ton of tackles today. I'm running out third quarter. Second down goal, Southern California. Second and goal, the right of the half. Clifford's got 12 tackles and 10 solo. That a ton. Marinovich throwing. Away. Marinovich now 20 out of 28, 245 yards. It is third down in goal, Southern California. And that was a good throw by Marinovich, one of his better ones, because there was nobody open. And you don't want to take a chance of forcing something in down here. Throw it out of the end zone. Make sure at least you come back and have a chance to go for it on third down. And if not then, at least get the three points. Comes bad news for the Huskies. Jackson just came back. Jackson and Wellman are going to the top of the picture. They're both clever. They're both quick. Marinovich rolls it that way. Jackson in the back of the end zone. Knocked out. 
incomplete pass. John was open and Todd didn't see it. And then Fraley recovered and got back to cover him. Well, it was a nice play by Fraley, the linebacker we were talking about uh, earlier in the ball game. Who got back and made a play and made Marinovich throw it high. Look, number 39 at the bottom right of your screen. Now watch him. He plays run and he's going to drop back for pass. And he's the man that gets in the way. And both feet are out of bounds. You only have to have one in, but both of them are out. They go for three here as Rodriguez checks in. 23 yards. Left puts it up and knocks it downtown. So with 16 seconds to go in the third quarter, the Huskies fighting valiantly. But now that looks like the Southern California offense starting to roll a little bit. And the Trojans go out to a seven-point lead. Rod, uh, Runnestrom, Grant Runnestrom, kick it off. Didn't get much of that one, pops it up. Short man's going to handle it for the Washington Huskies. That'll be number 31, Darius Turner, a fullback. And the Huskies have pretty good field position out of it. Be up around the 30-yard line. About time for one play to end the third quarter. And the Trojans are leading now by seven. Take a look at Washington Huskies in this first half, 158 yards, only five in the second. They have not scored a touchdown in this ball game. The one touchdown for Washington was a blocked punt. Last year, Conklin directed four touchdowns against SC. This uh, this year, he's going to have to get on the uh, stick in the fourth quarter to go win this ball game. Well, he got two of them last year in the fourth quarter. And ain't no quitting him. This is Lewis on that little swing pass, and Lewis moves up for three, up to the 33, and that'll do it for three. So after 45 minutes of football in the Coliseum in Los Angeles, minutes with Southern California leading by seven, 17 to 10. Washington ball, second down and seven from their own 33. Kerry Conklin whips one quickly. McKay has it and has a first down. He caught the ball across the 40 at about the 41. That's the new offense they've got in here. It's a quick, quick, quick type of thing. Pretty simple, but the quarterback has got to find somebody to throw it to and do it quickly the defense of Southern California has been handing the ball over to the offense all day long they are, special. they are special Conklin straight back this time in the face of the blitz gives it to the tight end Ames and Ames a little slow getting started, but once he starts to rumble, he'll get about five. <laughs> Illinois has counted another one for a 10-point lead. Miami rolling big against Cincinnati. Colorado having a field day against Missouri. Those Buffaloes are pretty good. Got a, got a running back playing quarterback. and five there's that quick one to Lewis gets a block from Riley down the sidelines and big play first down for Washington at the Southern California 32 here's the run back right here now he started out in the backfield and his emotions out if the linebacker doesn't motion out with him then it's man-to-man -man coverage and you can just throw the ball to him out here in the flat Coughlin sees no linebacker, two receivers at the bottom, one will block, and Lewis makes the run. That's why the quarterback is so key in this offense. You have to make a lot of adjustments at the line of scrimmage and after the snap. So the ball reaches the USC 32. The Huskies are making a bid to get back in it now, trailing by seven. There's the pass. It is caught. Oh, what a good catch by Riley. And the Trojans better be very thankful that he fell down. He doesn't Riley's fall down. That might be six. On the outside. He's the outlet man. McKay, number four, is running deep but gets jammed by Williams. Look how high this ball is. I mean, that's that's guts right there. <laughs> to lay yourself out. You're showing a lot of ribs to Williams right there. There's nobody 
between second down and four. Nothing doing. Numbers for three. Third quarter stats were dominated by Southern Cal. Time of possession was only three minutes in favor of Southern Cal at half. Now it goes up to ten. Washington needs to do something on this drive. This is a big series for the Huskies. It's third down and four. Second. Ryan and Owen. Owens number 99 I mean Ryan Owens is next to him number 90 the penetration up the middle and good coverage in the secondary combined for that sack Owens Ryan's fifth on the year and the 30th for Southern Cal in five games takes him away from a field goal moves him back to a punt all the way back to the 37. Well, Channing Wilds killed that one, knocked it beyond the field of play at 11.38 to play in the game. So now let us see what happens. And Southern California stops the Huskies, sack the quarterback, take over at the 20. They have scored in their last two possessions. That's Jackson in motion. Moritovich gives it to Irvins. And Ricky for three yards, and we go to Roger Twibo. Thank you very much, Keith. Stanford trailing Notre Dame 14 to 6 in the third. This is Steve Smith to Ed McCaffrey for the touchdown, two yards out. That makes it 14 to 12. A penalty on the two-point conversion. Tommy Bardell takes it in. It's tied at 14 in the third quarter. By the way, Smith threw 42 passes in the first half. Back to Keith Jackson. Mm, boy. Doesn't sound like they're trying to run, does it? Nope. <laughs> This is Ricky Irvin, and he is stopped right about the 25. Well, I don't care. You cannot convince me that a college football team can go to school, carry all the responsibilities, and travel three successive weeks. Very, very difficult. I don't care if you are a talented bunch like Notre Dame. And Stanford uh, has some pride, too, you know. They got beat last week by San Jose. They're not going to stand around and let you beat on. They're going to muscle up and make you work for it. Marinovich now throws incomplete. It just really wasn't anybody. Chico Fraley one more time pursuing the Southern California quarterback. Ricky Henderson, a pair of homers today. The World Series begins here on ABC Sports next Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and it will be in the American League team's city. And right now, one can speculate that that could be Oakland because they're up three games to one over Toronto. Mincy is standing back inside the 40. Ron Dale back in to punt it. Mincy takes it, goes to the sidelines to kill the clock, and he runs out right about the 45-yard line. So the Huskies now have very good field position after a 32-yard SC punt. Ball game, there's your score. You can see that there really isn't a whole lot of room to run normally against the Southern California bunch. And certainly the Huskies have been in their own right today against the run. Back goes Kerry Conklin to throw. Big guy from Yakima hums a bullet down inside the 35, and it's caught by Riley and a first down Husky. Trojan hurt. Man covering on the play is hurt. Riley releases inside of Spears. He's going to run a square in, gets depth, squares it in. The ball is right there, and Carrier there to make the tackle. 
and it's Carrier who's hurt. Well, have already lost Pollard out of the secondary. Gary's an outstanding defensive back. Injury might be, but it does. It is not a knee, and it is not an ankle. And Mike Adamley is over in that area, and we'll hear from him in just a minute. Meantime, Washington here. Conklin back throwing the ball on first down. That's Greg Lewis. And that little shovel forward, uh, Lewis gets pretty good gain out of what appeared to be nothing. And Lewis not getting much on the ground today. The top of your screen, number 20. Watch the protection inside. Plenty of time. Just a second, uh, uh, second thought for uh, Conklin. Flips the ball out to uh, Lewis. That's his fifth catch on the day. They're shutting him down on the ground, but he's, he's a good receiver. Picked up a couple of yards instead of taking a four-yard loss. That's not bad. That's a six-yard gain, really. Seven straight now for Conklin. And he wants McKay to come back a little tighter to him. Drops back. Passes away intended for McKay. And he can't get it. Oh, that's a great play by Garner. I mean, that's an outstanding defensive play by Dwayne Garner. Well, you called it right. There was no help for Garner. A lot of times these corners get help from safeties. This time, there is no help. Just man for man, one-on-one. -on -one. And he looked back when the receiver looked back, got his arm in there, and knocked it away. That's a big league play. Third down and seven for the Huskies. Conklin down the middle, pass good, pass is caught by Riley, touchdown Washington. Two Trojan defenders knocked themselves off the ball, off the receiver. Two Trojan defenders hammered each other. Garner and Pace are going to run together. Watch for it. There he is up here. It's the same pattern he ran before. It's a square in. He's going to get hit. Now, Carrier is the man that is missing in this equation. He was just taking off the field. Releases inside, up the field. Good throw by Conklin. And the two safeties run into each other. A nice little move. And you got to wonder if Carrier had been in there with that tackle but made. Take a look at it from a low angle from the end zone. Protection is good as Owen goes down. Nice line of sight to see. That's Coulter number uh, eight and Pace number 19 who was in there for Carrier. And Coulter is still down, Bob. Yep. Coulter is still on the ground. Does not appear knee though. I think he got. I think they butted heads. I think it's a shoulder or a head. Shoulder or head, yeah. In, in diving for him. Last year for a two-point conversion to win the ball game, and it didn't work then, and it doesn't work now. And USC continues to lead by one, 17 to 16. Not only did they run this last year, but Southern Cal ran this last week for their two points. Two wide receivers over here. Both of them are coming to the inside to try and pick off the man that has to cover the man out in the flat. Now watch the man covering him. He fights his way through. He knows what's coming. That's carrier number seven. He's seen that before in practice. It's a smart defensive back and makes a nice play. At 8.44 to play in the game. You go through this. Now Larry Smith went through a one-pointer last week. Don James, on the other hand, got pummeled. I mean, the, the stress of being pummeled <laughs> may not be as much as uh, that one-point stuff, huh? That's right. It's much better to be blown away than to, be lo than to lose by one point. That's a short kickoff again. Taken at the seven-yard line by Ricky Urbans and downed in a hurry at the 22. And let's check in with Roger Quavo. Thank you very much, Keith. We showed you how Stanford tied up Notre Dame at 14. The ensuing kickoff, well, for the first time in three games, the Rocket gets it. Ragib Ishmael takes it 66 yards back to the Stanford 16. Johnson would finish it off with a one-yard touchdown run, and Notre Dame back on top, 21-14. Let's go back to Keith Jackson. Well, they woke him up. I think George Burles had the right idea. Just don't kick it to him. That's right. 
Ball is just beyond the 23 for the Trojans and first down as they lead by a single point here in the fourth quarter. A lot of time left. 840. Morinovich with a little lob upfield didn't have anything on that. There was some pressure coming, people right in his face. And so he tried to touch it, but he couldn't do it. And it was Martin Harrison who's at 6-5, and Martin couldn't look him right in the eye. There's your scoring summary for the ball game. To this point. Eight minutes, 35 seconds. Second down and 10, Southern California. John Jackson, who now owns the career pass receiving record at Southern California, catches another one past the 40. We welcome those of you who've been watching Ohio State, Illinois, here in the Coliseum in Los Angeles at 8 minutes and 28 seconds to play in the game. USC is leading Washington 17 to 16. And the ball is at the Washington 41, uh, the Trojan 41 in possession of SC. Washington having just scored, went for two, missed the two-point try, and that's why they trail by one. That's Leroy Holt, the fullback for SC, carrying the ball and picking up four yards. Put the ball on the 45. Washington has a conference loss. They lost at Arizona. They went for two because the tie doesn't help a heck of a lot. Southern California has yet to lose in conference play this season. Matter of fact, they've run off for uh, some 15 in a row. Also today, SC, if they win, as Holt has the ball again, working out of the shotgun, that little handoff, and he gets maybe a yard. If USC wins this ball game today. They become the ninth team in Division 1A college football to win 600 games. But when this day is done, they'll go to the supper table and agree that it ain't been easy. And this one won't be easy either. I think that was a smart choice by Don James going for the two points. Down 17-16. If you make it, you're ahead. If you don't make it, at least you have time to come back and get more points. Washington defense now trying to stop him on third down. Morinovich steps away from pressure. Now can't find anybody and takes the lick. The pass is incomplete. And he took a pretty good wallop as Chico Fraley and John Cook were there. So 6.46 to play in the ball game. We understand that there's been a power problem, which has uh, negated coverage of the Ohio State-Illinois game. That's why you have been taken away from it, those of you who were watching it. And as soon as they get the lantern lit, we'll take you back. <laughs> like that lens. High spinning kick by Dale. Mincy out of bounds. Clock will stop as he steps out, and that ought, and may get a flag over there. 43-yard punt. There was some contact. That's personal foul. He hit him when he was out of bounds. You got to remember that these kids are just 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old. Well, that's uh, that's Seau, isn't it? 55. I don't understand that. He's been in the ball game. He's. Uh, He's had his lantern lit yeah, all day. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Usually guys that just get off the bench and want to hit somebody are the guys that to make those the poor decisions. Dead ball, personal foul against the kicking team, first down. You know, that's a big penalty. They're back there on the 12-yard line. That's 15 yards, and now Washington has it out at the 26. They'll make it 15 yards from the 11 out to the 26. Seventeen sixteen. USC leads Washington by one, and Kerry Conklin back to throw for the Huskies. 
underneath of the tight end Ames, and he gets to the 30. Here's Mike Adamley. I think it might be a good idea to pay attention both to number seven, Mark Carrier, and number eight, Cleveland Coulter. Both men are playing with pain. They got on the headset. They talked to the coaches upstairs. I think the coaches wanted to find out if they could play. Again, Carrier's got some bruised ribs. He's in pain, and Cleveland, in that collision with Stefan Pace, uh, had a, his neck snapped back. He's got what they call in the vernacular a stinger, and he, too, is hurting. So let's see if Washington might pick on him. Well, Coulter stepped into that last melee and came out of it looking pretty healthy. He looks like he's recovering from the stinger right now. Conklin, nine of his last ten passes for the white-shirted Huskies. Going to throw it again. Gets it in. Oh, no. That's intended for Riley. He put too much air under it. I think he thought perhaps uh, that Andre was going to run uh, hitch and go, and he didn't. He turned it outside, and it was, couldn't, they couldn't lock it up. That's what's been going on today. A little surprising. I thought Michigan might have scored more against Wisconsin than that. Bowl will take it. A couple Bulls boys right here on the sidelines, both James and Smith, former assistants of Shen Beckler. Big upset there, Virginia Tech beating uh, West Virginia. Third down and seven for Washington. Conklin's pass, no. Pressure, pressure, pressure coming, and Sayal and uh, Ryan were in there. Rouget might have been, uh, looked like either 91 was in his face. Here's a score you may not see on your leading scoreboards, but uh, Long Beach State and New Mexico State in the fourth quarter, Long Beach is leading 55-48. Man, I'm glad I'm not doing that when you'd be a tenor, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> Sounds like a halftime of a basketball game. Where I played, it was the final. <laughs> 5.47 to play in this game, and Washington's got to punt it away, and the Wilds gets it out. And Wallace makes a fair catch for Southern California at his 31. That was a 40-yard punt. Can't tell you who's playing, but we'll have Big Ten, Pac-10 regional coverage for you next week at 3.30 Eastern Time here on ABC Sports. This game means so much for the Washington Huskies in conference play. They trail by one. Might be one of those years where you can make it to the Rose Bowl with a loss. But I don't know about two. Bingo, backfield, Empton, second big sack for Big Steve today. He's only a freshman, 275 pounds. And I mean, uh, Ricky went down in a hurry. He came free. Sure did. Let's go ahead and run, and Empton is going to make an outstanding play. Gets around uh, Parkinson, number 71. Call it second down and 13. Marinovich back. Has a lot of time, and the pass is good. Pass caught by Gary Wilman at the 38-yard line. That's short, however, of the first down. They've got to go to the 41. Marinovich now. Adding to his career highs, he had a career high completion, school record 27 last week. Today, he has 276 yards, which is his career high so strange, far. Strange how in five games, he has now become the focal point of this offense. Yep. Pass on the run, pass good to John Jackson, pass good for a first down. John Jackson has gone into the Southern California record books today as the career receiver. Graduate student working on his MBA. I tell you, I sat there yes, uh, yesterday talking to John, and I, I, gosh, I've known him, I guess, most of his life, because his dad coached here. What a, what a bright, shiny, yeah, he is. Good kid to great talk with. youngster. Mm, my goodness. Major in uh, business administration, getting his master's in business yep. administration. So close to you. First down at the 47-yard line. Ricky Irvin, big play. 
out of bounds at the 36. Four forty nine and the Trojans on that play move it down to the Washington 36. Take a look at the low angle 75 pulling from right guard is Tucker 39 is Holt. Both good good blocks and Irvin's who has not done much today get some some valuable yardage. Switch back to the eye formation for a moment. And hand it off to big Leroy Holt. And he pounds for about five near the 31. Time now becoming an ally of Southern California, and they're now beginning to get down into Rodriguez range, too. A field goal would give USC a four-point lead. And force Washington to score a touchdown rather than just kick a field goal. Third and five. Irvin won't get it. Now it's fourth down. And Larry Smith. Oh. I'd be down. surprised. Yeah, I'd be surprised if uh, he kicks, tries to kick a field goal from this far out. You know, Smith, early in the year, when they lost to Illinois the opening game, they were 10 and 0 last year, lost to Notre Dame, and then lost to Michigan in the Rose Bowl. The loss to Illinois was three in a row for him. He went back and has it as assistants scout themselves to find out if there was any tendencies and things that they were doing that they weren't aware of. On third and three. It's going to be a Southern I California know. timeout. USC, that is their second and a half. They got one left. So you got third down, you got a long three, you got 331 to play in the game, you lead by one. This is a play that is worthy of conversation. Marinovich went to the sidelines for Southern California. The entire Washington defense came to the sideline to talk to Jim Lambright. Well, they've made up their mind. Well, this is where defensively you got to think about an option, and that that limits some of the things your defense can do. I think it is because Jackson leaving. They go, however, to an I formation set. They do option, and then Marinovich, the quarterback, and he's down to the 26-yard line, and that it looks from here like a first down. But they will measure at 319 to play. Well, when he lost those three games at the beginning of the year, he said, let's take a hard look at ourselves. Maybe they know something that we don't know about ourselves. They found out they were too predictable, too much of a power team. Everybody was playing them for the inside run and jamming their wide receivers. He said we needed more big plays, more option stuff, more sprint outs, just diversify a little bit more. We need to look for big plays, and that's what they have done this year. So they run the option. That's the same play that they ran for the touchdown here in the second half, and they keep the football. They ran more options this year in five games with Tom Marinovich than they did last year with Rodney Pete, who was a much better runner. It's a tough kid. So it's first down and call it the Washington 25. Just go to the 25. Irvins carries the ball. Student body right. Penalty flag goes down and they roll him down at the 24-yard line. And now we're inside three minutes. The key play, well, I don't know if it is or not. It's the missed two-pointer. It would be a Washington lead if that ball had been thrown a little short. 
You know, that's the same corner of the same end zone where he missed <laughs> the two-point conversion last year that would have given Washington the victory. All right, now you're talking about key plays. How about this one? Southern California now is caught holding at this particular point on the Washington 25. They get being 10 yards for holding. It's been one of the real problems that has festered in the uh, system for Larry Smith is the number of penalties that have uh, been thrown not only against his offense but his defense. 245. Marinovich back, has time, has room. Pass is incomplete. Oh, they're going to call a penalty. Leroy Holt over the top, Eric Briscoe, and they call Briscoe. This may look pretty close to you. Well, there are very few times when you can come directly over somebody and not be called. Uh, yeah. Good call. When you come directly over somebody, even if you hit it smack dab at the right time, you're going to get the call. I mean, it's very tough to knock a pass down by coming directly over a guy's back. End of the game, we'll announce the Chevrolet most valuable players for each team. And for the 19th year, Chevrolet in its scholarship program donating $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each university. You're going to see, if you have an eagle eye, number 41 playing tight end for Southern California. That is not Scott Lockwood. That is Scott Goldberg. Tore up his jersey. Got a big rip in it, so he's wearing Lockwood's uh, jersey right now. That's Leroy Holt carrying the ball down to about the Washington 20. But while all this is going on, the clock is very quietly beginning to tick away. And it's now running at 2 minutes and 15 seconds to play in the game. Southern California leading Washington 17 to 16. Looks like Bobby Bowden's getting his troops organized, doesn't he? Illinois leading Ohio State by 13 in the fourth quarter. In second down four, Southern California. Behind the offensive line, sir, and just pounding. First down, SC, Washington, 13. Crowd, 58,410. Watching today. Urban's big hole. Out of bounds at the seven. Make it the six. Trojan down on the field is Brent Parkinson. Parkinson was one of the men that threw a key block on that play. So timeout for the injured Parkinson at 124 to play in the game. A minute and 24 seconds Southern California 17 Washington 16 the Trojans have the football second down resting just short of the six yard line Marinovich gives to Ricky Irvin's cuts it back five three and down he goes just inside the three to the two William Doctor brought him down so USC late in the game Asserting themselves and trying to put it away. Rolling the scores through for you. Their time allotment, I think, is gone. It is now first down as they mark it. And mark it a half a yard. For the good for the Trojans and on first down and goal Irvings for the corner. 
No. Not quite. A foot. At 40 seconds. And it's academic. Really. Well, the biggest thing about this drive, and it's been a long drive, starting out on their own 31-yard line, is not so much that they're on the one-yard line ready to score, but that they ate the time off the clock. A one-point victory is big enough, but the time that they took off the clock was a vital thing for Larry Smith. Second and goal. Irvin. Touchdown. Stick at the end zone and lock it up at six seconds to play. Quinn Rodriguez for the extra point out of Jackson's hole. Good. Next for Washington, Oregon in Seattle. Next for Southern California, California at Berkeley. Well, it wasn't pretty for Larry Smith and the Trojans. That's two uh, ugly games in a row, but you've got to win when you don't play well, and they've done that two times in a row. What are you, what's going to happen when you do play well? This is just going to be a, an off tackle. The running game did not do well most of the, most of the way, but it got going at the end of the game to eat up the clock in the fourth quarter. The Los Angeles Raiders and the New York Jets on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. And don't forget the World Series starts a week from tonight at 8 p.m. in the American League City here on ABC Sports. And this game is in the books. USC 24, Washington 16. We now go through the exercise of kicking off. I say it's in the books. Well, you're sitting at home if you're a Husky partisan saying, hey, you're big tummy. They can catch the ball and run it back and score a touchdown and go and tie it. That's true. Well, you know, first of all, you don't kick it deep to allow them to get a, a return set up. You squib it. And then secondly, when uh, they throw the deep pass, you get everybody back to defend against it. But stranger things have happened. Ismail, Ismail, uh, Ragib is playing uh, about uh, 390 miles north of here today. It's hard to return that one. They kill it up short and immediately call timeout, and the clock doesn't start. So the man puts it down, and Mark Jones uh, quickly using his head. So let's check in for a moment with Roger Twybell. Thank you very much, Keith. Baylor, with the top pass defense in the nation, played Houston tough for the first quarter, but then the Cougars scored 33 in the second quarter. And what about Andre Ware? 24 of 40, 333 yards and three touchdowns, 17 on the season. Those are his first half statistics. Now back to Keith Jackson. Thank you, Roger. You know, all you got to do, everybody back there that could possibly catch that ball, as long as it's in the air, stick up your hand. Fair catch. If you've called a fair catch, the clock won't move. Well, the clock doesn't move if somebody touches it, and uh, yeah, they blew for two seconds. Yeah, well. But I'm up here, and the youngins are down there, and it's hard. Four seconds is time for that long, you know what? And Conklin can throw it a long way. So Southern California will send uh, Garner, Coulter, Carrier, Spears. Probably somebody else. And what you're looking for is, to, is, is, is the alley-oop, but just not a catch. But you need a deflection to one of your Husky teammates who can catch it and continue to run with it. So here comes McKay, Bailey, and Riley to the bottom of your picture. Three of them are going down to feel like a cubby. Yeah. He gets it away. And it is intercepted by Mark Carrier, and the game is over. 
And the Southern California Trojans have defeated the Washington Huskies by a score of 24 to 16. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are James Clifford for Washington and Todd Marinovich of Southern California. Clifford had 14 tackles at least today. Todd Marinovich, 284 yards, his career high. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for academic achievements, assisting those who need some financial help. That's your final score, 24-16. And the Trojans continue in the Pac-10 Conference, undefeated, trying to go to the Rose Bowl for a third successive year. Three, two, one, mix the music. Late arriving crowd here in Ames. Should be just about full by the time we're into this one. Well, they do have a good time here at Cyclone Stadium. We got here about a couple of hours before the game, and they were tailgating out in the parking lot. It looked like they'd been here about two hours before we were. So they'll move it back to the 30, and Shudak will kick again. Of course, Colorado with Iowa State today, home against Kansas, then at Oklahoma, and home against Nebraska, and as we talked about at the outset of the broadcast, it may be tough for Colorado to stay focused here. Not that they're not aware of what they have to do today, but it's tough when you have two big games like that right down the road. We'll try it again. This kick much shorter. Nelson at the 19. MJ across the 30 to the 31. The CU will have good field position. Dave Ader, a defensive back, made the stop, so it's first and 10. Hagan, the quarterback. Kissick, the fullback. Hemingway will play a lot. Pritchard, the wingback. The enemy, the tailback. Flanagan will play a lot. Campbell, the wide receiver. Perrick, the tight end. A veteran. A solid offensive line. Coleman, Garten, Lewenberg, Muhlenberg, and Vanderpool. The handoff is to Kissick to about the 33 where Melvin Coleman makes the stop. Defensively, for the Cyclones, it'll be Matt Rayberg, Matt Grubb, and Don Edwards up front, along with Randy Byrne. The backers, Larry Radigan, Mike Shane, and Charles Vondra. Phil Navarro, their leading tackler with 68, is out today. He was injured last week against Kansas. Pugs and Robertson. The corners, Baker and Bauer, are the safeties. The enemy's got a hole across the 40. Out to the 42, where Tim Baker, the free safety, made the stop. and. That's a CU first down. You're probably going to see Iowa State throw the Buffaloes for a few losses today, and conversely, you're going to see a lot of this. Big plays by the CU offense. Cyclones have eight guys in the line of scrimmage, and you're going to win a few of those battles defensively. You're going to stop CU for negative yards, but CU will hit several big plays because of that defensive alignment. First and 10 for Colorado, the ball on the 42. Hagan's got it, cuts it up inside, and is out to the... 47 where Melvin Coleman again the junior linebacker from Chicago made the stop a five-yard pickup for Darian Hagan what a start Hagan had last week but he's the guy that obviously makes this thing go when you talk to the coaches that of teams that CU has faced invariably they all point to Darian Hagan and say he's the big difference from last year's team that's Pritchard in motion Hagan looking to throw. Fires to Nelson. He's got it at the Iowa State 30. Pickup of 23 yards and a first down for Colorado. Well, for a guy that this spring not many people knew could throw, this is a pretty good throw. I think it's right on the line. Nelson to the post and back to the flag. The ball delivered right on time into the zone defense. And this, this is really what sets the CU team apart from a lot of clubs that have the ability to run the football. They've proven in the first five games that they can hit the key pass when they have to. 
They've got it first and 10 from the Iowa State 30. They took the opening kickoff and they're moving right down the field. Kissick inside the 30 to about the 27. Matt Grubb and Don Edwards were both there on the tackle. Give them a couple, make it second and eight. Iowa State coming into the game wanted to try to keep their defense off the field, and although they haven't had a chance offensively, this is exactly what Jim Walden did not want to have happen, a long, sustained drive early for the CU Buffaloes. Nelson is the wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. The enemy to the 25, where Melvin Coleman again, the 6'1", 200-pound junior, made the stop. That's three tackles now for Melvin Coleman. Twelve twenty and counting here to go in the first quarter. Ron Sapolo and Dave Logan from Ames, Iowa, where we've just started. The Buffs took it on their 31. They've now got a third and five from the Iowa State 25. Campbell and Pritchard are the wideouts. And this one will be on Colorado. Maybe a delay of game. Well, they're going to call John Perrick, number 87, for moving, although he's a tight end. So he does have the ability to reset once he goes down in a three-point stance. That's the call. I, I don't know if we've got a chance to take a look at it. John Perrick, number 87, on the end of the line of scrimmage, moved a little bit, but a tight end can move. A tight end can shift. And evidently, that's... Uh, that's not what's going to happen. See if we can see it. Watch number 87. When Hagen goes under the center, you'll see him bounce back just a little bit. Now, he's the tight end. Offensive linemen are talking to each other. We didn't get a chance to see it, but that was the call. It's a big penalty because now it's third and ten. Hagen. Incomplete. Pass was deflected by Charles Vondra. Bondra, number 37, a senior from Ames in Colorado, will attempt a field goal with Ken Culbertson. See, you tried to run the same pattern to MJ Nelson, the little flag pattern. The tight end got so much depth on the crossing route that you had two receivers in the same area. Nice job by the Cyclones, especially the linebackers, getting depth on that crossing route. Culbertson, five of eight from the year, two of three from 40 to 49. This one is 47 yards, and it is good. Ken Culberson gets this one started off correctly with a 47-yard field goal. 11.38 to go in the first quarter. Colorado strikes first. A three to nothing lead. 31 is Thibodeau. 42 is Steve Lester. They are deep for the Cyclones. Lester from the goal line. Out to the 23 where Tim James and Marcellus Elder combined. Tim James and Mike Motley, excuse me, combined to make that tackle. So Iowa State will have it first and 10 from their 22. Brett Oberg is the quarterback. Bryant the running back. Williams and Glotfelty, the wide receivers. Bush is the tight end. Up front, Williams, Van Hoosen, Sims, Wells. And T. Otis. Brian in motion here on first and ten. Oberg with time. And he's got it. A first down to Troy Moore out at midfield. McLuhan made the stop. Well, Blaze Bryant goes in motion. He's got nobody behind him. Actually tries to dump the ball to the tight end. And then with enough presence and enough time to come all the way back, all the way across the field, back to the weak side. And a good catch by Moore. See, this is a guy that has pretty good ability at quarterback. He can run, he's a great scrambler, and he's played long enough in the system that he understands what he's trying to do. Very, very patient, plus with a good running back. 27 yards and a first down on the first play from scrimmage for Iowa State. Oberg's got it again. He hits Wilkinson down to the 40. That'll be another first down. McGee was out there to make the stop, but two plays and two quick 
passes and two first downs for the Cyclones. Walker, Steed, Salavea, the down lineman, Williams and McGee, the outside backers, Johnson and Jones on the inside. The secondary, McLuhan and Gibbs, the corners, Bruce Young and Tim James, the safeties. And right now their defense may be back on their heels a bit. Two plays and Oberg's got the Cyclones inside the Colorado 40. There's a...